experience the aftermath of an incredible Starship launch as Orbital Launch Mount suffers extensive damages. Get ready to witness the aftermath of an incredible SpaceX Starship launch. Watch as the Orbital Launch Mount sustains significant damages post-Starship flight, showcasing the sheer power and intensity of the launch. In this exclusive footage, we unveil astonishing new details about the Starship Flight 5 and the upcoming redesigned upgrades for the launch pad. Witness the evolution of space technology as SpaceX gears up for the next jaw-dropping launch. Stay tuned for an inside look at the innovative changes in the orbital launch mount and how they're preparing for the next groundbreaking mission. This year we'll finally see the two towers at Starbase taking shape, as the first construction. Steps have already begun. Exciting transformations are underway. In this episode, we'll dive deep into a specific step of the tower construction process. That often goes unnoticed. Ready to explore? Let's get started. Usually, when SpaceX launches a rocket, most people focus only on whether the rocket exploded or not. However, there's much more involved in measuring the success of a mission. The rocket is only part of the equation. There's also the launch mount, the launch tower, and other surrounding infrastructure to consider. Developing the world's largest rocket also means building the world's strongest infrastructure. And creating this infrastructure can be as challenging as building the rocket itself. Naturally, any damage to the launch pad or tower means more than just a setback for SpaceX. Recently, images of the launch pad after the latest launch were released. And they didn't meet everyone's expectations. In this video, we will talk about these developments and discuss whether the launch pad will be ready. For the next flight on time, the launch pad faced several significant issues. During recent Starship launch, particularly involving the water deluge system and the ship, Quick disconnect. Initially, SpaceX implemented the water deluge system after the first Starship launch, which created a large crater beneath the launch pad. After this launch, Musk realized the need for a water deluge system. This system is designed to protect the launch pad from the intense heat and vibrations generated during rocket launches by flooding the area with water to cool the launch pad and suppress flames. Despite this, the water-cooled steel plate beneath the orbital launch mount showed significant wear after the recent launch. Post-flight images revealed that the steel plate had turned yellow due to the intense heat from the rocket engines, which overheated the steel and altered its color. This suggests that while the steel plate works, it may not be durable enough for long-term use. SpaceX may need to modify or replace the steel plate with one that can better handle the extreme conditions of rocket launches. For the Starship launches, this system can discharge up to 40,000 gallons of water per minute. This is substantially more than what was used in previous rocket launches, demonstrating the system's capacity to handle the immense energy generated. In comparison, NASA's deluge systems, such as those used at the Kennedy Space Center for the Space Shuttle launches, typically discharge around 12,000 to 14,000 gallons per minute. Moreover, the water is cooled before it is released to further reduce the heat impact on the launch pad. This cooling process is crucial in preventing the steel plate from overheating and sustaining damage. Despite these measures, the steel plate underneath the orbital launch mount is showing signs of wear after just a few launches. The discoloration and structural changes observed in the steel Plates suggest that SpaceX may need to explore more advanced materials or additional cooling techniques to enhance its durability and longevity. They could consider using steel alloys with higher heat resistance or incorporating more advanced cooling technologies to ensure the pad can withstand hundreds or even thousands of launches without significant wear. The ship quick disconnect also faced some issues after the launch. This component is a critical part of the launch system, providing the necessary fuel and power connections to the rocket before liftoff. The quick disconnect is designed to connect the rocket to ground systems, supplying it with fuel, oxidizer, and power during the pre-launch phase, and then disconnecting smoothly as the rocket lifts off. Once the rocket engines ignite and the vehicle begins to lift off, the quick disconnect must disconnect quickly and 
cleanly to avoid any drag or damage to the rocket or the ground systems. One of the primary challenges with the quick disconnect is its exposure to the intense vibrations and forces generated during liftoff. These forces can cause it to misalign or malfunction. SpaceX has made several adjustments to address these issues, including altering its position, changing the contact angle, and expanding its operating range. These adjustments are intended to make the quick disconnect more resilient to the extreme conditions it faces during launch. Despite these efforts, the system continues to struggle with the powerful forces of rocket launches. The strong vibrations can cause it to lose its alignment or fail to disconnect properly, which could potentially damage the rocket or the ground systems. It must not only withstand these forces, but also ensure a smooth disconnection to prevent any interruptions in the fuel and power supply until the last possible moment. The quick disconnect system is designed with several safety features to manage these challenges. These include redundancy in the connections to ensure that if one part fails, another can take over. The system also incorporates sensors and monitoring equipment to detect any misalignment or malfunction early on, allowing for adjustments to be made before they can cause a problem. In addition to these technical adjustments, SpaceX may need to explore more robust materials or innovative designs to further enhance the system's resilience. This could involve using materials with higher tolerance to vibrations and heat, or redesigning the coupling mechanism to ensure a more secure and reliable connection. Despite all these issues, the chopstick system still appears to be functioning well post-launch. It is part of SpaceX's innovative Mechazilla, which is designed to catch and stabilize the rocket booster upon return, eliminating the need for landing legs and allowing for rapid reusability. After the recent launch, the chopstick system was lowered for further inspection by the team. But overall, it won't require major repairs. The chopstick system operates by using two massive arms that can move vertically along the launch tower. These arms are equipped with mechanisms to grip and stabilize the rocket booster as it ascends or descends. For landing, the arms are positioned to catch the returning booster, guiding it back onto the launch mount with precision. Meanwhile, the surrounding infrastructure, especially the tank farms, remained unaffected by the flight. Musk is now planning to launch another Starship as soon as next month. SpaceX is implementing even more changes to the Starship in preparation for this upcoming launch. One of the most crucial upgrades involves the Starship's heat shield. In previous tests, some tiles fell off, posing a significant risk. To address this, SpaceX plans to reinforce the heat shield with the secondary layer of protection. Musk confirmed on Twitter that the new tiles would be twice as strong as their predecessors, significantly reducing the likelihood of them cracking or coming loose. Additionally, SpaceX will implement a silicone felt layer beneath the tiles, which, although not reusable, will provide an extra layer of safety in case any tiles are lost. Beyond the heat shield, SpaceX is also focusing on upgrading other critical components of Starship. SpaceX is working on a new design for the hot staging section that will enhance Starship's quick turnaround capabilities without the need for discarding parts. Another anticipated upgrade involves the addition of roll control thrusters. These thrusters will improve control during the landing process, reducing issues like valve clogging that have occurred in previous flights. Starting from prototype ship 29, these thrusters have been integrated into the design, and their performance will continue to be refined in subsequent prototypes. Another exciting change for the upcoming flight is the re-entry profile of the Super Heavy Booster. 12. After successfully landing both stages in the ocean, SpaceX now aims to catch the booster. Using the Mechazilla arm starting from Flight 5. This approach involves the booster steering itself towards the catch tower and has never been attempted by any other organization. If the booster detects any issues, it will divert and safely land in the ocean. This automatic adjustment ensures the safety of the launch tower while aiming for a successful catch. During the fourth flight, SpaceX used a virtual tower to simulate the catching process instead. 
of the actual Mechazilla Tower. This virtual tower test was designed to gather data on the booster's ability to navigate and position itself for a precise catch without the risk of damaging the actual tower. Musk stated that the successful execution of this virtual tower catch gave SpaceX the confidence to attempt the actual catch in the upcoming flight. Additionally, recently, after extensive preparation, two columns of the new tower foundation were lifted and stacked vertically. Regarding tower segments, SpaceX currently has seven segments located at the Sanchez site. The remaining two segments, along with the two chopstick segments, left Florida on June. 8th, and are expected to arrive in Brownsville within the next one to two weeks. Once SpaceX finishes building the tower foundation, assuming these segments will be delivered and stacked immediately without waiting for the remaining parts. In this image, we can see that beneath the tower foundation are columns made of concrete. These columns are quite long, and that's because they need to penetrate deep into the ground, thereby providing stability for the tower. So how are they created? Firstly, according to the model, drills will dig 133 small holes, each to a depth of 32 meters. These holes will be arranged to form a symmetrical square. After drilling, concrete will be pumped into them. Immediately after pumping the concrete, the next step involves placing the reinforcement. Cages. This must be done while the concrete is still liquid and hasn't hardened. Following that, a thin binding layer will be poured on top of the structure to facilitate subsequent work. At the base of the vertical rebar rods, small concrete cubes will be added to strengthen the piles, preventing them from tilting or bending. Next, the entire structure will be supplemented with surrounding walls. This is also when rebar steel grids will be placed into the previous structure. According to the picture, there are two such layers. One steel layer is underneath, placed through vertical steel bars and supported by concrete. Cubes at the base of the steel column. Another layer will be placed on top, supported by the inverted U-shaped bars. Then a J-shaped vertical bar will be added to hook and increase the stability of the steel grid. Additionally, horizontal steel bars will be added around the previous pile of steel bars, creating a unified and durable structure. Once this is completed, the surrounding wall will be fully closed. At this time, a component called an embed will be placed on top of the steel frame. This part will be square, with two adjacent sides extending and at the four corners there will be smaller squares. These are the points where the tower legs will be placed, stacked and connected to the underlying structure. Of course, this will require an extremely large amount of concrete, up to 181 truckloads. Once poured, the frame is removed, revealing a design similar to Ryan Hansen's image mentioned earlier. Currently, this structure appears to be complete and installed after SpaceX cleared and poured concrete for the entire new area around the second launch tower. Obviously, it provides stability for the entire launch tower. A structure will last longer if it has a solid foundation. Remember, the launch tower we're discussing is for Starship, the most powerful rocket in the world with a thrust of over 7,000 tons and potentially more in the future. Without such a durable structure, the launch tower would quickly suffer from issues, like tilting and eventually collapsing. This launch tower is built for long-term service, robust enough to support thousands of flights as recently revealed by Elon Musk. Once the foundation is complete, it will be time to start stacking the segments. If there are no changes, the new tower will still have nine segments, meaning the height will remain the same, but I truly hope for a change here. The next phase of Starship development promises many innovations. These towers will play a crucial role in SpaceX's mission to achieve full rocket reusability. As Musk has stated, the two towers stage has long been underway, and once they successfully recover their behemoth, we'll enter a new epic dubbed The Return of the King. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become 
an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time.